If you were a kid in the 1980s, you probably have fond memories of growing up during that time. You often spent afternoons at friends' houses, maybe even jumping on their trampoline or watching MTV. You also kept yourself busy by making mixtapes and binge-watching rented movies from Blockbuster. If this sounds like your childhood, then you will definitely relate to these 1980s memories. Do you remember being beyond excited to get up on Saturday mornings? The excitement of running to the TV and switching on Saturday morning cartoons and knowing you didn't have to go to school was a great feeling. Some of your favorite shows may have been Thundercats, He-Man, The Care Bears, or maybe even Pee-wee's Playhouse or The Smurfs. You watched all of this while eating a big bowl of your favorite cereal, and in those days it was all about the sugary cereals. Captain Crunch, Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Puffs, and Cookie Crisp were just a few. Your school days may be best remembered for playing the Oregon Trail, where you died from dysentery, lost cattle, and broke plenty of wagon wheels. When it was first introduced, this video game was meant to be educational, teaching kids about the grim realities in the American West during the 1800s, but it became so much more. When the teacher announced that it was time to play the Oregon Trail on the school computers, it felt like a gift from the heavens. During the 80s, every young girl wanted a Cabbage Patch Kid. The adoptable dolls were hard to come by, especially around Christmas. But once you got one, you were proud to show it off. If you weren't able to get one of those pricey dolls, you may have settled for a strawberry shortcake or a rainbow bright. On the other hand, all the boys wanted a He-Man Masters of the Universe figure. In fact, they wanted to own all of the He-Man action figures, along with Castle Grayskull. The Rubik's Cube has been confounding kids and adults alike since its invention in 1974, but it was in its heyday in the early 1980s. In fact, one of the best-selling books of 1981 was The Simple Solution to Rubik's Cube, written by James Norse, If the Rubik's Cube didn't do it for you, then maybe you were one of the lucky ones to get the first Nintendo Entertainment System on your block. This was the era that established classics like Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, and so many more. And if you had trouble getting a game to load, all you had to do was blow the dust out of the cartridge, and it seemed to work every time. Friday nights were, for many, a blockbuster night. Stepping into that brightly lit blockbuster store and seeing an endless selection of movies was a true thrill. It wasn't uncommon to leave with a stack of movies that would last you all weekend, and you could even get some popcorn or candy to go along with it. Maybe you were one of the ones that saved up your quarters all week so that you could head over to the arcade to play the newest games and hang out with friends. You tried your best to make it on the leaderboard whenever you played Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Asteroids, or Donkey Kong. During the 1980s, these dimly lit buildings would be packed with people, plunking quarters into those magical machines for hours on end. Who didn't own a few Garbage Pail Kids during the 1980s? These funny cards became a big hit because they depicted children that looked like Cabbage Patch Kids, but they had creatively rhyming names. From the grossest to the scariest, Garbage Pail Kids were always good for a laugh. But the gum that came inside the packs was some of the hardest, most stale gum you may have ever chewed on. Growing up in the 80s, you may have also been an avid reader. Book series like The Babysitter's Club, Sweet Valley High, or Choose Your Own Adventure were some of the very best the decade had to offer. Judy Bloom and Beverly Cleary books became must-reads, 
and a big incentive for reading all these books was a free pizza from the Pizza Hut Book It campaign. It seemed like every kid growing up in the 1980s was a huge wrestling fan. One of the true forces behind the popularity of the sport was Hulk Hogan. Everyone wanted to be a part of Hulkamania, and the Hulkster had this generation of kids believing that anything was possible through the power of training, prayers, and vitamins. If Hogan wasn't your guy, you may have been rooting for the macho man Randy Savage and the beautiful Miss Elizabeth. MTV was an important part of the pop culture of this time. During the channel's initial rise in 1980's heyday, it helped to kickstart the careers of stars like Cyndi Lauper, Madonna, and even Michael Jackson. In those days, they actually played music videos, so you would have to sit through hours and hours of videos until they played the one you wanted. Another pivotal moment came in 1983, when Michael Jackson did the moonwalk for the first time while singing Billie Jean, and it became his signature move. From that moment on, every kid in the United States decided they wanted to practice that backward glide, which looked deceptively easy when Michael Jackson did it. To look cool in school, middle and high schoolers across the country began tight rolling their jeans, growing out their mullet, and teasing their bangs to the sky with a can of Aquanet hairspray. These same kids would also spend hours listening to the radio and waiting for the local station to play their favorite song, all while resting one finger on the record button of the cassette player. There was an art form to crafting the perfect mixtape, as there was only so much time on each side of the cassette. The Sony Walkman made listening to these tapes easy if you were on the go. Otherwise, they would be a gift for your significant other. The California Raisins were a claymation blues band that not only graced commercials and animated specials, but they also made it to toy stores and the fast food restaurant Hardee's. Not only could you get these collectible figures if you bought a cinnamon raisin biscuit from the drive-thru, but they also put them on lunchboxes, t-shirts, comic books, and posters. The 1980s had arguably the most memorable sitcoms of any decade, with shows like Knight Rider, Punky Brewster, The Wonder Years, ALF, and The Cosby Show. But when it came to movies, there was nothing better than a John Hughes film. If you were a teenager during this time, you were able to relate to all of his flawed characters. Being a lovable loser like Ducky was an achievable goal. Or maybe you too wore your insecurities on your sleeve like the girl next door, Samantha Baker. Movies like The Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, and Pretty in Pink were so relatable for so many, and John Hughes was able to capture that period of time perfectly. The fads and trends that were created during the 1980s are hard to beat. When we see them, we instantly recognize that they were part of a colorful decade that has started to make a comeback. These moments in time were for many the absolute best time to grow up. So let me know in the comments your own memories of the 1980s. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.